Loving your wife unconditionally. My name is Paul Friedman. I founded the Marriage Foundation. And you might say this is my topic because before I discovered all these principles of marriage and created all my books and these teachings, no one talked about unconditional love in marriage. It just wasn't part of marriage. So I'm glad to see that it's caught on. And the reason it's caught on is because it's so commonsensical. If you think about it, there's really only two reasons to get married at all. One is you want to be happier and you want to be happier every day forward till the end of your life. Every single day should be better than the day before. And the other reason, which is the main reason, is so that you can experience unconditional love, which is something that you only experience from your mother or you imagined it. Now, there are those who experience unconditional love who are on a very high spiritual path. Monastics, monks, nuns, they experience unconditional love in their prayer and meditation periods. But guess what? Marriage is just a high, a spiritual path as monastic life is, but it's different. And it's more tangible in terms of the vehicle that you have with which to appreciate and enjoy unconditional love. You want to experience it. Who doesn't? You're a soul. A soul, your true nature is love itself but we get cut off from our source because we individually, we have free will and we get all caught up in these incarnations, these experiences in this world. And we forget about ourselves. We forget who we are, what we are. But unconditional love is all that there is at the end of the day. So we want it. Now, how do you get it? And this is so simple that it's ridiculous. Now, look, I'm not teaching a religion here. I don't want you to become Jewish or Christian or Hindu or Muslim or Jain or anything. I, I don't care. But to not acknowledge that you're a soul is kind of silly. That is what we are. What religion you choose to follow, it's personal choice but know that you're a soul. A soul is unconditional love. How do you experience unconditional love? Where does your wife come in? Here's how it works. Love is God, God is love. That's the nature of God, that is the nature of the soul. In order for you to experience unconditional love, because you're in a human body, it's very difficult to receive love because the drive to survive, which is biologically innate in our body, has filters to protect ourselves. We are identified as the animal part of ourselves, our body, and the drive to survive puts up walls, defenses, and it keeps out anything that we may think is going to threaten us as an individual. So in order to feel unconditional love, you'd have to be a phenomenally trusting person. You may say, I'm pretty trusting, but are you really? I would say that if one of the great prophets came and stood in front of you, Maybe in your mind, in your imagination, you'd fall on the floor in front of them. But well, probably not. Because we're so controlled by our mind, and our mind is so controlled by our physical form, that the defense mechanisms don't allow even the indicators of unconditional love. So there's a trick. There's a trick. The trick is simple. 
And what it is, is that you use your free will and your volition to give love. And when you're giving that unconditional love, it's flowing from God, and I could put it into a schematic, or you can. So imagine yourself here, imagine God over here, imagine your wife over here, you're using your free will and volition to love her. Where's that love coming from? You don't create love. That love is coming from God through you, and that's how you experience unconditional love. And I think that's totally cool because it gives you 100% total power over the amount of unconditional love that you will feel. Now, this is not theoretical. This is what I teach through my books. This is what I teach through my course for men, course for women. This is how you do it. It's lofty, but only because we're not. We tend to be like groveling in materialism. So yes, it's lofty, but what is more lofty than unconditional love? So what does it require? It requires you to, it's just like if you wanted to learn how to fly a plane. You have to learn about airplanes. You have to learn about the physics of flying in the air, what works, what doesn't work. You got to learn about yourself, your mind. You got to learn about marriage. You got to learn about it. And then you need to apply yourself to developing habits that have you doing what you're supposed to do to achieve the unconditional love. So again, you could get it from my books or you could get it from the Course for Men, both through the Marriage Foundation, which is a nonprofit that I set up. And again, it really is basic stuff. The principles that I discovered are rock hard. They're solid. It's like physics. Maybe that's a book I should write, The Physics of Marriage, but I don't like it. So <laughs> hopefully this was helpful for you. Now, what is the benefit of learning how to love unconditionally? Benefit is that you'll be happier than you've ever been in your entire life, even if your wife hates you, ironically, but it's true. Now, usually what happens is when you learn how to love unconditionally, it sets up a different dynamic in your marriage, a very positive, dynamic things even out your wife will respond not necessarily reciprocate but she'll respond and things become lighter happier and better just the way you want it so i hope this was helpful for you i really do for me it's already second nature i've been at this for so long and our clients too as they get it, um, I mean, it's amazing. Um, let me read, let me read a, uh, I'm gonna have to, bear with me, I'm gonna dig this up. Uh, someone sent me this. This is from a member. I just wanted to say how much the week four videos resonated with me. So he's taking the course for men. Thank you so much. I'm still wrapping my head around the concept of giving with no expectations of getting anything back. <laughs> That's probably new to you because we have these expectations and they block unconditional love. Uh, I got why the so, which is a technique that I created for people to control their mind I got why the so is so important on so many levels. I have to keep telling myself to think positively. For me, it's the hardest thing to do. Yes, because the habit of thinking not positively owns you. So you have to replace the habit and it's yours to replace. Um, I've used the technique every day and you have to use it every day for the rest of your life. I use it still, especially while driving. It's amazing. <laughs> I can relate to that, uh, especially driving in California. Um, 
Now after these lessons, I'm catching my mind when I expect something from my wife just because I'm doing things for her. I left out her name. Uh, okay, and that's it. Learn this stuff. Make yourself a happy person. That's your birthright. I'm going to let you go. Blessings to you. Blessings to your family. And I certainly hope that the time you spent, me, spent with me was worthwhile. God bless.